Hello, National University uh, College of Extended Learning Students. This is uh, David Goyette, continuing our discussion of U.S. history. Um, topics you will uh, need to know and be aware of for the diagnostic exam coming up for um, U.S. History um, Diagnostic A. Okay, so continuing. Um, which of the following best describes major physical feature in the urban centers of the United States during the last quarter of the 19th century? Um, the extension of mass transit systems enabled many urban dwellers to move to new suburbs. Um, in many U.S. cities, the uh, mechanization of mass transit began during the 1870s. Extension of these lines in subsequent decades marks the beginning, marked the beginning of urban sprawl. An increasing number of city dwellers moved to the outlying su suburbs, uh, also known as white flight in some cases. <clears throat> um, and of course, uh, I was going to mention, uh, eventually we'll talk about Lovett Town, so mark that one. Um, all of the following were proponents of manifest, manifest Destiny, except um, the Whigs, the Whig Party members during the Mexican uh, War, uh, who largely opposed Manifest Destiny, claimed that the Mexican-American War was being waged purely to protect the interests of slave expansionists, those who voted for Polk in 1844, one of the president who would expand the borders of the country, Southern slave owners and Northern Democrats both believed expansion would be good for the economy. Um, of those who were against the American Mexican War, Mexican American War, were um, Abe Lincoln and uh, um, Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens, uh, and others. After the Civil War, the United States adapted an attitude of isolation from foreign affairs. Uh, the turning point, however, signaling the beginning of the U.S. becoming a world power, was the Spanish-American War, and of course, um, Theodore Roosevelt's um, Rough Riders is going to be uh, um, an indication of that. Uh, the turning point in signifying the start of the U.S. becoming a national or regional leader was the Spanish-American War, as an extension of the Monroe Doctrine. Defeating Spain meant the control of the Western Hemisphere and the removal of the European powers from the region. Easy victories in Cuba, the Philippines, and elsewhere showed um, the strength of the United States across the globe. The Dawes Severality Act of 1887 was designed to force the assimilation of the Native Americans into American society. The main goal of the Dawes Act was to forcibly assimilate Native Americans into white society by removing them from their reservations and uh, opening up schools to teach them typical American etiquette. As a, re as a result, many Native, Native cultures and traditions were destroyed. By this time in history, there were few tribes left to be at war with. The, um, and this is from, uh, uh, I got the sample from this question from a Kaplan um, AP US History in, uh, prep book. Um, and let's see, 30, uh, the 30 point writing exercise, this is where I want you, this is an extended writing prompt, so please try to write at least three or four paragraphs. Um, and the question is, read the two passages below, then complete the exercise that follows. Alexander Hamilton, the report on manufacturers. The expediency of encouraging manufacturers in the United States appears at this time to be pretty generally admitted. Not only wealth, but the independence and security of the country appear to be uh, materially connected with the prosperity of manufacturers. Every nation with a view of these great objectives, or those great objectives, ought to endeavor to possess within itself all the essentials of national supply. These comprise the means of subsistence, habitation, clothing, and defense. A full view, having not been taken of the inducements of the promotion of manufacturers in the United States is proper to consider the means by which it may be affected. In countries where there is great private wealth, much may be affected by the voluntary contributions of patriotic individuals, but in the community situated like that of the United States, the public purse must apply the deficiency of private resource. In what can be so useful as in promoting and improving the efforts of industry? Uh, that's, of course, um, those are Hamilton's uh, arguments. And, of course, at this time you had the Hamilton and Jeffersonian battle, the, uh, the uh, Federalists and Anti-Federalists 
the the argument over the bank, the national bank, the Bank of the United States, Hamilton and Washington being um, in favor of nationalizing the bank, Jefferson being against it, Jefferson siding with the kind of states' rights position, Hamilton going with kind of a stronger federalist position and encouraging uh, the states to uh, force a kind of um, greater industrialism uh, into the South. And of course, Jefferson was against this. This is Jefferson's um, comments on notes on the state of Virginia, 1784. Those who labor in the earth are the chosen people of God. If ever he had the chosen people whose breast he has made his particular deposit for substantial and genuine virtue. Corruption of morals in the mass of, of cultivators is the phenomenon of which no age or, nor nation has furnished an example. It is the mark set of those who, not looking up to heaven, to their own soil and industry, as does the husband for their subsistence, depend for it, instead on the casualties and caprice of customers. Dependence begets subservience and venality, uh, suffocates the grim, the germ of virtue, and perpetuates fit tools for the designs of ambition. Generally speaking, the promotion which the aggregate of the other classes of citizens bears in any state of that of its husbandmen, in the proportion of the unsound to its unhealthy parts, and is a good enough barometer whereby to measure its degree of corruption. While we have land to labor, then, let us never wish to see our citizens occupied at the workbench or twirling in distaff writing prompt. Here's your writing prompt. Using the information presented in the two passages and your knowledge of U.S. history, knowledge of U.S. history key here, uh, because if you did not get much of what Jefferson was getting at there, and it can be a kind of obtuse passage, um, you'll need to rely on your knowledge of U.S. history. Analyze the influence of the views expressed in the passages above on the development of political parties in the United States. And of course, what we're getting at here is the Jeffersonian Republicans and the anti-federalist federalist camp. Of course, this early um, fight between the Jeffersonian Republicans and the Hamiltonian Federalists. Um, go back to your textbooks. One textbook I love, I go back to again and again. Love its size. It's easy to, to grab. It's not too big. It's the Unfinished Nation. This is uh, by Alan Brinkley. Um, what I like about it, it has some excellent essays, great maps. It's a good size to tote around. It's hard, you know, hardback, so you're not going to mess it up too much. You can use it in your classrooms with your students. Um, if you, uh, it is an, it's, it's on the um, recommended as an AP text. So if you're te wanting to teach an AP class at your high school, you can recommend this for your students. Um, so the, the College Board recommends it. Uh, I just really like it. Uh, this, this is the one I'm currently using for AP US History with my students. It's also a very good source. Excellent. Um, it's America Past and Present. Um, and you can get, you know, if you can't find this in new for a good price, just look around for a used copy. And you know, mine's pretty battered up because I take it everywhere. I use it almost every day. And I have students in both AP History 1 and 2, so I'm constantly running around with this thing, using it as a resource. I don't have everything memorized, and like you, I'm a human being, so I don't store every single fact about American history in my mind. It's, uh, I know people that are better at it than I am, but I've never had that ability to store everything up there. I just review constantly, try to stay up to date. So anyway, um, let's keep working at this. Call, email. Uh, send me your questions, and I really hope you do excellent, do well in the diagnostic, and continue to do well in the class. Um, talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. <clears throat>